Well, I'm in the pulpit at uh, 20 after 9, so we have some time to kill. Anybody have any requests? <laughs> no, we never have time to kill in the church. I'm sure of that. <laughs> the scripture for today is found in... I already I changed it yesterday, Jim, so don't even put that up there. <laughs> it's found in Hebrews 12, 2. Sorry about that. Um, and it sounds like this. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. How did you do that? He's a magic man. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. As some of you know, and as we have just heard Debbie explain, this Wednesday is this very special day in the life of our church. It's Valentine's Day. But it's also another special day in the life of our church. For Wednesday, we traditionally call Ash Wednesday. It's the very first day of the season of Lent. But going back to Valentine's Day, I'd like to tell a, a short story. It was a year ago today, or this coming Wednesday, Valentine's morning, and I woke up from a dream, and, and of course, Scott is still laying beside me, and I said, honey, I, I just had this, this crazy dream that, that you gave me this beautiful diamond, sparkling, expensive necklace for Valentine's Day. What do you think that means? And he just looked at me tonight and raised his eyebrows like that. He's like, you'll know tonight, baby. You'll know what that means tonight. And I'm like, oh, wow. So all day I'm thinking, oh, I can't wait till he gets home and I get this beautiful necklace. I'm so excited about this. And sure enough, five o'clock comes and he walks through the door as he does every night, not. Anyways, he walks through the door and he has a big smile on his face and he hands me a package. And I'm not talking just any package. I'm talking this package was wrapped. It had bows on it and everything. I'm not used to that. So I open up the package in kind of a hurry, and I'm so excited, and I open up the package, and here's a book. And it says, The Meaning of Dreams. <laughs> so welcome to my life. <laughs> now anyone that really knows me knows that this story is not a true story. I wouldn't get very excited about receiving a diamond necklace. I would probably lose it within a week. <laughs> I'd much rather get a, a set of keys to a new Harley. Because <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> so everybody that knows me also knows that there are how many parts to a sermon? Three, yes. The what, what is the issue? What are we talking about? The second part is, so what? So why do I care? What, how does this affect me and why should I care? And the third part is, now what? Now that we know we have this and we should care, how do we apply this to our life? Um, before I get started though, I want to give an update on Scott. He is, I don't know how many of you know this, but we have four other churches that are under the New Leaf umbrella that he is the elder for. He is the, the go-to guy from the conference for. And he has to visit these churches once a year, and that's where he is today. He's visiting one of the churches. I think it's Monroe. Is it Monroe or Monroeville? It's Monroe. Monroe United Methodist Church, he is worshiping with them for the first service. He will be here for the second service. And he's doing a little bit better. Um, he was sick earlier, but he's, he got over that, and he's back in the saddle, so to speak. And his target date for preaching here, his very first sermon, the target date is February 25th. 
So keep him in your prayers as he prepares, prayers, yeah, as he prepares for his um, re-debut, I guess, is that a word? <laughs> as he comes back to church to preach. So, that being said, let's go on, see how I'm filling things in, trying to draw this out a little bit. Okay, so we got three parts to the sermon. The first part is the what. What are we gonna talk about today? Well, we think we got Valentine's Day covered with Debbie's wonderful message for the children, and sometimes I think her messages are enough. I don't even feel I need to come up here and say a word. But I'm not talking about Valentine's Day today, so I guess I will say something. We're going to talk about Advent, no, no, Lent, which leads up to Easter. And That's the season that we're going to start on Wednesday is the season of Lent. And doesn't it seem like just yesterday it was Christmas? I mean, it seems to me that we just got through the Christmas season where we celebrated the birth of our Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ But before the day of Christmas arrived, we also celebrated what we call Advent. Those are the days leading up to Christmas where we are preparing our hearts for the birth of the Savior. Um, Remember the the Advent wreath that was right over here? Then we had the families come up and, and light the candles. Remember that, anyone? Oh, good. And remember the Advent booklets that we handed out that, um, that people from the church had written different devotionals to have placed in the book. And, and we all kind of went through that together and it was a daily thing and it was something that helped us focus on Jesus and his birth into this world. And now, here we are and we're ready and preparing for the day of Easter and we're doing that, getting prepared through the season of Lent, which leads us directly to Easter Sunday. Now, Lent lasts 40 days and 40 nights. The reason it's 40 is because it was 40 days that Jesus went into the wilderness right before his earthly ministry, right before he went into ministry for those three years, he went into the wilderness for 40 days and he fasted, and he was tempted by Satan. So that's why it's 40 days until Easter that Lent starts. In both of these seasons, both Advent and Lent, they're important times of drawing closer to God, important times to put our focus on God and prepare for the two most holy days in the Christian year. And where Advent is preparing for Christ's birth in a manger so long ago, so Lent prepares us for his death and for his resurrection. It's a time where we focus on his love. And most important, we focus on the sacrifice that he made for us. This season, I know, is really becomes crystal clear when you have actually visited the Holy Land and seen the sites, when you have actually seen the city of Jerusalem, when you have been to the upper room, when you have walked the Via Della Rosa, the path that Jesus walked to his death outside of Jerusalem at Calvary when you have prayed at the Garden of Gethsemane, and I'll never forget the prayer that was prayed there. We prayed for Dale, who was uh, diagnosed with cancer. and The bishop actually prayed for him, and laid, we all laid hands on him and prayed for him right in the Garden of Gethsemane, the same place where Jesus prayed. We stepped into the empty tomb, the traditional site of the empty tomb. So that's where it became real for me, where I can read the words from scripture and they jump out and these images just crowd my mind with the places and things that these eyes have seen 
And that's the what. We're going to celebrate the season of Lent. Lent is here, ready or not. So that's the what. So we say, well, so what? So Lent's here, you know, it comes every year and it goes and no big deal. But our focus, and this is the so what, our focus during this season of Lent should be solely on Christ, period. The season of Lent follows the last days of Jesus, the last days that he walked here on this earth in human form. God made flesh. The word of God made flesh. It's what he did during these days that that make it possible for a sinner such as I to experience salvation, to have that hope of heaven in our lives. It's what Christ did for us that Um, during this season, nearly 2,000 years ago, that give us, who call upon his name and who have received him into their hearts, gives us each eternal life. And it is for us who know the Messiah in forgiveness of sin, a time where we find this time of Lent, where we find the greatest joy, but also the greatest sorrow we've ever known. And they they kind of mingle together throughout the season. And we're going to look at some of those days, those special days that we celebrate during Lent. And we're going to find out what these days mean and what I mean by the statement of joy and sorrow that come mingling down. The first holy day, it's not quite a holy, holy day, The day before Ash Wednesday. We're going to celebrate this Tuesday. It's called Shrove Tuesday. Anybody ever hear of Shrove Tuesday? Yeah. Well, it's the Tuesday before Lent. I think they celebrate this in Mardi Gras, don't they? In a big way. Shrove Tuesday is the last day before Lent. And Lent begins, of course, on Ash Wednesday. So in the Middle Ages... Shrove Tuesday was a day of repentance, a day of forgiveness, and they called this repentance and this forgiveness, they called it being shriven. We don't use that word very often. There's a reason. Because we don't use it very often, that's why. (laughs) So that's why. So Shrove Tuesday is not something that we normally call it. Sometimes people refer to Shrove Tuesday as Fat Tuesday. (laughs) But during the time of Lent, way back in the day, and of course some still carry the tradition today, during the time of Lent, meat was not eaten. They wanted to sacrifice the pleasure of eating meat or using any of uh, the animal products during this time of Lent so they could save money so that they could give the money to the poor. So for the Shrove Tuesday meal, they made pancakes. And why pancakes, you might ask? Well, they were made for dinner because pancakes used up all the lard that they had in their cupboards, used up all the fatty oils that they had in their cupboards because they wanted to get that stuff out of their pantry. Pancakes were made. And that was what was for supper on the day before Lent began commonly referred to as Fat Tuesday, and I guess now that kind of helps explain it. We were eating all the fatty oils and the fatty lard and all the fatty stuff that makes us fat. (sighs) I've eaten them all. (laughs) Fat Tuesday was a day of preparation, preparing for the season of Lent. But it was a time to focus on Jesus Christ and what he did for us. So that's Fat Tuesday, Shrove Tuesday. Not very popular these days. How many eat pancakes on Tuesday before Wednesday, Ash Wednesday? Yeah, oh, we have one. (laughs) So Ash Wednesday rolls around the next day. We celebrate that this Wednesday, by the way. It officially begins the whole season of Lent, just like the first day of Advent, Officially began the whole season of Advent. Lent lasting 40 days, ends on Easter. 
Interesting thing about the Lent season, it does not include the Sundays. Those 40 days of Lent are actually 46 days. It does not include the Sundays in the season of Lent because Sundays were little celebrations known as little Easter's. And every Sunday, today, we celebrate Christ and who he is now. We celebrate his resurrection. So Sundays are not included in the 40 days of Lent. Um, they are little resurrection Sundays. Ashes on Ash Wednesday are used as a sign of humility. And if you look in the, B the Bible, you will see many places where people covered themselves in sackcloth and, and smushed themselves with ashes. King Saul did it. King David did it when he, he was um, repenting of his sin. So many others, they were so sorry that they wore sackcloth, which was rags, and, and they covered themselves with ashes because ashes were a symbol of repentance. And repentance means I'm really, 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 really sorry for what I've done, and I'm going to really, 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 really try not to do it again. And some of us are successful the first time, and some of us aren't. And that's where grace falls in. It's a time where we really privately tell God that we are sorry for what we have done. We are sorry for our sin. And on Ash Wednesday, after we've had this time of quiet with the Lord, explaining ourselves and repenting and turning from our sin, then we go to our pastor, and the pastor put ashes on our head or maybe on our hand. And, that's, and the ashes are put in the sign of a cross. And the pastor says to you something like this, repent and receive the gospel the good news of Jesus Christ. So the cross is a symbol of our sorrow. The cross is a symbol of how we want to turn from our sin. And this is the first day of Lent. This is the beginning of the Lenten season. And this is a time that we focus on Jesus Christ and we ask his forgiveness. We're going to fast forward a few weeks to Palm Sunday. And this is the day that, that we celebrate um, Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. We have the kids come up and grab a palm and march around the church, waving their palms, saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hmm. It's his triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. Yet while Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was such a grand, joyous occasion, it was only four days later that he would be betrayed and led to the cross. Those same people who cheered Jesus on Sunday, Hosanna, waving their palms and throwing alms and and coats before his donkey that was carrying him into the city. The same people would jeer him on Friday. Many Christians call this day Passion Sunday, and it begins what we know as Holy Week. And we celebrate and worship his triumphant entry. We focus on Jesus because he knew the road that he was traveling was soon to be filled with the passion of hatred and the passion of violence. Palm Sunday, and this is a time to focus upon Jesus Christ and his majesty. A few days later from Palm Sunday is Monday Thursday. You've all heard of Monday Thursday. It's where we celebrate here communion we have a tenebrae service. And Maundy is kind of a word like shrove. Nobody really gets what it is. 
It's a word that many people don't understand, but it comes from the Latin word, and I'm glad Scott's not here, and I'm sorry that John is, but I'm going to try this. Mandatum novum. Eh? <laughs> it means a new commandment, and according to the Gospel of John, it was in the upper room where Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you. Now this is the day we, of Passover. Monday, Thursday is the day that the Last Supper was served in the upper room. It was the day that Jesus Christ was betrayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. It's the day that Christ was scourged and mocked by the Roman soldiers the day that Peter denied Jesus Christ three times. And to me, Monday Thursday is one of the saddest days of Lent, especially when we have our service here and candles are going out representing different parts of the Easter, the Passion Week story. And when the Christ candle is blown out, I can't help but have tears in my eyes knowing that that represents Christ's death. That's hard. Christians gather on this day to remember Jesus at the Last Supper. We share communion. As Christ said, do this in remembrance of me. And this is a time to focus on Jesus Christ and what he suffered and what he endured for us. And then comes Good Friday, the darkest day of all to me. And it seems strange that we call the day that Christ was placed on the cross, that we call that good. Huh. I thought about that as a child. Why is this good? This is the day that Jesus died that we're celebrating. But we, we think about what it meant to us as Christians, for it's only because Christ went to the cross that we are washed clean of our sin through his blood. And it's only because of his sacrifice, because he died for us, that we can enter heaven. We can enter it forgiven of our sins. We can enter it free of any condemnation. Good Friday, and this is a time to focus on Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for us. And after Good Friday comes Easter. And we can't help but focus on Jesus Christ and how he was resurrected from the dead to prove to us that there is life after death and there is a heaven waiting for those who call upon his name, who call God Father. It's a beautiful day. So there's the so what. So now we got the what, the so what, and now we're on to now what. So, okay, now we know all these things. How do we focus on Christ during this season? That's the question now. How do I focus on Christ when my life, as you've all heard before, is so crazy? I have things to do. My goodness, I have people to care for. I have meetings to attend. Not too many meetings. I have directories to finish and hospitals people in the hospital to visit, and I have sermons to write, and, and, and oh. put yourself in that scenario that I've just talked about, the busyness that I just created, the issues and the needs and the plans, because we all have them. Whatever it is in your life, put yourself in that. How do you get past these things? How do you work through these things? How do you rise above these things and focus on Jesus Christ? Well, I must say you're off to a good start because you're here. <laughs> Whether in person or on cable TV or live stream or Facebook or whatever it's called, you are here worshiping with his chosen and making plans, and being with God's people. Christ's whole existence, all the way from the manger to the cross, all the way from heaven to earth, and back again, was a continual outpouring 
of himself for the sake of others. Jesus says in Mark chapter eight, if any man will be my disciple, let him take up his cross and follow me. That's, so you're already halfway there. You're already focusing on Christ and it's not even Ash Wednesday yet. How about that? But another way to focus on him is by, by um, starting the Lenten season with us this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. And any time between 6.40, we have to allow the soccer people to get out of our way. <laughs> but between 6.40 and 7.30, you can drop in here because we will be dispersing ashes for those who wish to receive them right here at New Leaf. These ashes will place either on your forehead or your hand in the sign of a cross, and it's simply a sign of repentance, a sign of how you want to focus on Christ, of turning and repentance, of turning from your sin. And this is a time we can focus on Christ and his forgiveness of sin. And also, every Thursday evening, beginning on February 22nd, which is a week from... Thursday. At 6.30, there are special services set up throughout Conneaut at different churches where someone will preach, someone from a different church, someone will bring music, a choir, or a special number. These are called our Lenten services, and the first service just happens to be right here at New Leaf, February 22nd at 6.30. And the best part, oh, I shouldn't say that. Another interesting part about the service is we're going to have refreshments afterwards. So all you good Methodists, I'm sure, will show up for everyone. <laughs> but this is a time to focus on Jesus Christ and the journey that he walked for us. Another way we can um, focus on Christ is these, and we're handing them out today as you leave. As we had the Advent devotional during Advent, we have prayer, fasting, works of love, the 40 days, which is done, uh, ministry by the United Methodist Women, and it's a way that you can give to mission work through the reading and giving a dime or a quarter every day. It's all instructed in here. All 40 days are in here, complete with scripture verses, keeping us all on the same page once again and keeping our focus on Jesus Christ. And maybe you know a, a shut-in who would like a visit or maybe a phone call or, or even a card. Is there someone from this congregation that's been missing and you want to reach out to? Um, maybe somebody's not feeling so good and you want to make them a bowl of chicken noodle soup or something? You know, it's time that we put our love for Jesus Christ into motion. Loving both of those who attend the church and even those that don't. And in so doing, guess what we're doing? We're focusing upon Christ during this season of Lent. Because this is the time that we fix our eyes on Jesus. The author, the finisher of our faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for these many ways we have to keep our focus on you. And in a world that is scurrying about, Lord, help us and continue to help us keep our focus on you, especially during the season of Lent, where we are preparing, Lord, for your death and for your resurrection. Jesus, we just ask your blessing on each person here and for those who don't know you and forgiveness of sin, the prayer is simple. Father, come into my heart. I turn from my sin and I give myself to you. Forgive me, Lord. Enter my life and make it worth living. I give myself completely. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen.